Hello everyone again, this is LE Diecast, and in this video I'm going to do something different. Um, as I mentioned in the last couple videos, we went to a show last weekend. It was a, it was a small show, but uh, my son and I came home with a whole lot of different cars to add to our collection. He got a whole bunch of loose cars and I made a video out of that. Um, one thing I like to do at these conventions is go through the loose car bins you know those beat up old boxes that are usually under the table that have cars in either less than mint condition uh, removed from the card just kind of a random assortment of cars and I like to find cars that I don't know anything about or that look interesting so that I can spend a little bit of time on researching them and figuring out where these cars came from what series did they come from what year are they from are there other color variations of them and sometimes you find some interesting things and I came home with about probably about 25 cars and I was gonna make a video of those but I thought instead I'll make a video of these cars that you see here that I thought really had some interesting history behind them and um, maybe it'll give us a little bit more to talk about and I'm sure a lot of you know more about these cars than I do so here's what I figured out um, let me move these guys aside let's start with this guy and some of you will recognize this guy. Um, this is the, um, I'm trying to remember the name. Wait, it'll come to me. It is the Trail Runner, Trail Runner. And as far as I know, this was only released in one series and that was in the McDonald's series. It was a McDonald's giveaway car. Pretty well-built car. It's actually an older car. It came out in uh, uh, 1999. And that was about the middle of these McDonald runs. The McDonald runs on these um, Hot Wheel cars, which they don't do every year. I think McDonald's tries to do a car giveaway every year, but it's not always a Hot Wheels car. And they started in 1983. This was 1999, which 1999 had some of the coolest cars in it. There was another car in that series called the Maximizer, which I'm trying to find. If anybody wants to trade me a Maximizer, let me know because I am looking for one of those. But uh, this car is a really cool car. I mean, it's basically a regular mainline car. It's got a metal top body. It's got a plastic windshield, so there's nothing inside of it that you can see. It's got a plastic bottom on it. The bottom is interesting, and this is when I, when I saw it at the show, I thought it was kind of interesting, in that it reads, and I, I'll try to kind of move this so you can see it. Let me zoom in on that. Um, it reads 1999 Mattel Hot Wheels and then at the bottom it says for McDonald's Corp so if you're ever looking for these McDonald's cars they um, if they're not wrapped a lot of times they come in the McDonald's wrapper you'd recognize but if they're not wrapped they say on the bottom they're McDonald's as far as I know this has never been released in another series which I think is kind of odd so I don't know why they do that a lot of those McDonald's cars they don't ever release again and maybe they're just too crazy, or maybe they don't fit the mainline series very well. But this is a, uh, you know, it's a it's a really neat car. Something about the McDonald's cars has nothing to do with this, but I think it's really interesting. The first uh, year that they were released, and I think in the second year, which was 1983 and 84, they released different series on the East Coast and West Coast, and they were fairly big series. There was about Oh, I'm going to say 12 cars in the series, and they were different on the East Coast, West Coast. So there was an East Coast series and a West Coast series, and they did that for the first two years. And uh, if you can ever find those old eight, 1983 cars, they are pretty nice cars. This is 1999. He will drive off over there. There we go. Uh, next up is this guy. A lot of you will recognize this casting. This is the Twin Mill 2. And... Um, it's kind of a funny looking car. It has a back end that's kind of been chopped off of it. It's a great car for the uh, for flat tracks. It's not good for the curves. It has that great big kind of front end. And if you notice that front end kind of tilts down a little bit like an airfoil on a stock car, not an airfoil, a, um, a wedge on a stock car. Now I'm forgetting my names, but it's not good on tracks. It catches catches on the tracks and it doesn't do turns well. Plus, this front end gets really beat up. Um, doesn't have a bumper, <laughs> so it gets really beat up on track. So we don't use it a lot. But um, this guy uh, came out. This is the 1998 model, 
It's from the Mainline series. This car was also in five packs, and I'm pretty sure that's where this one came from. I think the five packs had different wheels on them. And most of these loose cars tend to come from five packs, so it's not unusual to see the five pack cars loose. Um, this guy was in nearly every mainline series up until about 2006, and then he disappeared. And it's one of my favorites. I wish they'd bring it back. It's been in about 20 colored variations. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that one of the most recognized red line models is the old twin mill, which kind of has a back end on it here and sort of looks like this. You would recognize it if you saw it. And uh, this is the kind of revised version as an ode to that old red line version. It's also a very fast car. We, we just had our fastest cars on the track competition we do each week. And this guy finished in the top, oh, I think he was top three, I want to say. So next cars are these little guys. And these little guys, at least to me, looked kind of plain. And I saw them, I picked them up, and I put them back. And then I thought, you know, those are perfect little cars for me because I don't know anything about them. And on top of it, if you look at the bottom, there's nothing on the bottom to tell you anything about them. They're a 1990 Mattel car, Hot Wheels. They've got a metal base. They've got a metal top, so they're, they're actually kind of a weighty car. Uh, but there were these two colors, and I thought it was interesting because the red one, if you, oh, by the way, the red one has the same thing on the bottom there. Um, it says, it's upside down. It says, oh, now it's upside down. It says, <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> there it is. 1990 Mattel, and it's what was throwing me on those is if you look at these two, they're, um, they're flipped. See? That one, the Hot Wheels is on the bottom. This one, the Hot Wheels is on top. Again, all those things were kind of interesting to me. Those always make for an interesting history when you start seeing changes like that. But uh, this red one also has, and I don't know if it'll show up here. Let me try to get the glare off of it. It has a little Hot Wheels symbol on the windshield if i can zoom in there there it is it's a little hot wheels symbol it's on the windshield kind of interesting you don't usually see that and so my first thought is well i wonder if that's worth anything because it's got that also this one has tampos it's got these kind of very 19 late 1980s tampos on it where they just were going crazy with the colors. And um, this one's got like a spec Spectra color paint on it, but no tampos. So what's the story? Well, it took me a long time to even figure out what these little guys were. I'm not a good car guy. I kind of can guess what cars are, like if they're BMWs or Volkswagens or whatever. These little guys threw me. And they're Mazdas which all the car people are out there are probably saying, well, of course they are. They're Mazda's MX-5s, and they're Miatas. Mazda Miatas. And I don't remember this model. I don't know if that's a made-up model or not. I certainly was around at that time. I don't remember them. And um, so the history with these guys, the green one, this guy, is a Toys R Us exclusive. He only showed up in the Toys R Us 10-packs. So this is the color variation that was in the Toys R Us 10-packs. And those tampos there are the tampos that were on the regular mainline series that came out at the same time in a different color. This guy, the red one, trying to remember real quick what the red one was. The red one was, oh, I remember. It was a mainline series car and it, it had tampos and this one doesn't and there was a variation that did not have tampos and they all had by the way the little the little hot wheel symbol so it's not worth anything <laughs> this guy is actually worth slightly more than all the rest because he doesn't have tampos and this guy yeah he's, he's collectible if you're into those things but neither of them are worth anything really uh, they're both fantastic on the track so there you go those little guys. Next up are these guys. Now, if anybody recognizes these right off the bat, and if you do, then you are a complete stud with Hot Wheels because 
This one especially threw me. This one, I thought I knew what it was, and it wasn't. Now, this will be a good test for the Hot Wheelers out there. So if you know what those two are, here's the story, and see if you follow the story. This one took a long time to figure out what it was. Oh, by the way, these two are related. So if you don't know what the relation is, I will tell you. Loosely related. <laughs> this guy is a bonus car. Now, I saw bonus car on this, and my first thought is, well, that's just the name of the car. And my son loved this car because it was kind of rocket shaped. It was also wrapped in a plastic wrapper that really made it hard to tell what it was. We could only kind of feel what it was. So we bought two of them. They were 50 cents each. He got one. Well, this is his um, that he didn't like because it wasn't good on the track. So I traded it for him officially. So now it's mine. But we also got another one. And by the way, Shane from Chef's Hot Wheels. You guys are going to get the other one. It will be part of your little care package that is heading your way very soon. So you will get one of these. So you can listen to the story. This one is a bonus car. Now, what's a bonus car, you ask? In 1997, so way back when, there were mail-in cars. Kind of like what they do at um, Kmart and Toys R Us where you buy a certain amount of cars, send in, and you get a car. This was the car you got, and it was considered the second quarter car. So I'm assuming that there were four of these. It's also in green, and they're in green these days. So I don't know if the green continued back then or if that's just a, a, a coincidence. Um, it's considered limited edition, although I don't know how limited it is. They don't seem to be particularly hard to find, and they don't seem to be particularly worth a lot of money one way or the other. So it does have a metal base, and now this is the part that I thought was interesting. It says Warner on the bottom. I don't know if you can read that. There's not much information there, but it's Warner, and then it says something that I can't read there, and then Malaysia, so it's a Malaysia base. It doesn't have the name of the car. I thought Warner. Well, it's either a Warner car, that's the name of the car. It didn't look like that's what they name it, so I bought it. We'll look into it. It is a bonus car, and it's got Warner on the base. Now remember that, we're gonna come back to that guy. This guy, which my son has now called the Panda Car, and that's all I now call it, but it is a, a GM Ultralight. Now, if you guys recognize this, then you go to back to about, oh, what was the date on this? I wanna say 1993, and again, on the base, this one's really hard to read. It says 93, so it is a 93, I don't know. Let's see if I can catch the light on that here. See if that will read. It says 93 Warner, and it's a Thailand base. It's got a metal base, metal body. This is a heavy car. It's about as heavy as a uh, big boulevard car would be. And look at the wheels, because those play into the story. Okay, also look at that tampo on the back. That plays into the story. All right, what this guy is, is he is from the movie Demolition Man. And the movie starring Sylvester Stallone and Long Forgotten, and if anybody remembers it, you'll remember it was not that great of a movie, but oh, now I'm saying Sylvester Stallone. Was it Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, well, I don't remember, but it was a 1982-93 movie. This car came from that series. There was actually a series of, I believe, eight cars from the movie. Most of the cars were new castings for that series and the series didn't do particularly well most of the castings disappeared but this car was also released in the main lines in 1993 I believe it was 93 it was also in the 2001 mainline series and it was released in red and the red one actually looks a little cooler than this i think but i think the red one has a plastic top the um this car in the main line had three wheel variations. And if you remember back in the 90s, that was the big thing. This was one of the wheel variations. But, but wait, the Demolition Man series did not have that wheel variation. Ah, so that would make this a main line, except for that Tampo. That Tampo is definitely the Demolition Man Tampa. The mainline series 
There were three different cars, three different wheel variations, three different Tampo styles. None of them were that particular little star there. So this is a Demolition Man car with different wheels. Now, I don't know enough about that series to know how long it was around. I'm assuming this was probably a late release in that series, and they just slapped on the uh, mainline series tires on it to get them out the door. But I'm pretty sure this would be a Demolition Man car, not a mainline. Now, back to that Warner on the base. And what do these two have to do with each other? Remember, both of them had Warner. Um, that's why I picked them up. I thought that was interesting. Shows what you can find when you start looking on the bottom of cars. This car, not part of the Demolition Man series. Remember, it was a bonus car. It was a send-away car. This car, the same casting, the original casting of this car was part of the Demolition Man series. It was a solid silver uh, version. In fact, solid silver. It looked like a bullet. I'm pretty sure it wasn't popular for that reason. It looked just like a bullet. And I think they put Warner on the base because it's a Warner Brothers movie. Warner Brothers had some sort of copyright issue. Warner stayed on the base when they reissued this, which they rarely changed the bases. Warner stayed on this one all the way through the other releases. There have been about six other releases of this car all the way up through about 2003. This car got Warner on its base because this one is from that series, but I had my friend check his version of this car and it does have Warner on the base also. We don't know if the mainline version has a plastic base or not. This car is fantastic for the track. Last part of the story, me and my son were playing on the four lane racetrack that they had at the show for the downhill racers. This car actually beat two of the downhill racers' best cars by a nose, and everyone was very interested in this car. I got offers to buy this car upwards to $10, and because they wanted to do my little video here that talks about it, um, I didn't sell it. Probably should have sold it, and probably could have found another one if I'd gone back in. But uh, my son was attached to it by that point. It was the Panda car, and he didn't want to sell it. So it actually beat some downhill racers' uh, cars. It beat a drag bus, and it beat a uh, funny car. And it wasn't an official race. We were unofficially racing on an unofficially sanctioned track. So make it whatever you want out of it. So there you go. I always like looking at these cars and kind of figuring out where they come from. I always think that's, that's fun to do. But those little cars, that's their stories. Tell me down below if you know anything different. I will try to get some uh, images up with this video. And thanks for watching. And again, join us at the Facebook page at LE Diecast.